Hello dear students, our today's topic is the next heterocycle pyrazole. Today we will go through the synthesis reaction and some medicinal compounds of this heterocyclic nucleus. Let's look at the structure. It is a five-membered ring containing two nitrogens at position number one and two to each other. Besides this, there is presence of three carbons and four hydrogens in total. So its molecular formula is C3H4N2. This is called as 1H pyrazole because the nitrogen which is position number 1 bears this nascent hydrogen. So that's why it is called as 1H pyrazole. In IUPC nomenclature, it is also called as 1, 2 diazole. 1 and 2 represent the position of these two nitrogens. And though two nitrogens are there, so we will use the prefix di. And for nitrogen, we will use the prefix urge, so it will become di urge. And for five member ring, we will use the suffix all, so it will become di azole. Next, look at the synthesis. The first synthesis is from acetylene and di azomethane by 1 3 dipolar addition. As the name indicates, the starting material in this case is this alkyne acetylene which reacted with diazomethane. Now dear students, if we look at diazomethane, this nitrogen which has four bonds have a positive charge. But nitrogen is electronegative, so it does not acquire this positive charge for longer period of time rather it will attract the electron pair from this CH2 group over here. So in this way actually the positive charge goes on to the carbon. So we can say that this carbon has the positive charge over here and this nitrogen has the negative charge. So this is atom number one and this is atom number three. So this one and three dipole addition takes place on this acetylene. This CH2 group which will be positively charged now will then attack on this carbon for the electrons. It is the electrophilic addition reaction takes place over here. This will make a bond between this carbon and this carbon. Likewise, when the bond is broken down and the electrons of this bond are shared with this carbon, this carbon will acquire the positive charge and that's why it will make a bond with this negatively charged nitrogen. So ultimately, we will get this dipolar addition to give us this intermediate. Here you can see that these two nitrogens are there which are doubly bonded and this carbon has the bond with this carbon and the nitrogen has the bond with this carbon. So it will give us the formation of 3H pyrazole. Now this 3H pyrazole is quite unstable and it tautomerizes to its more stable 1H pyrazole form. So the tautomerism takes place in such a way that this one of this hydrogen goes on to the nitrogen so it will be converted to NH when it is gets converted to NH this bond will be shifted at this position likewise this bond is get shifted over this position so this gives us formation of this 1H pyrazole here we can see that this double bond is shifted over this and this double bond shifted over this so this migration of the hydrogen will make the tautomerism to 1H pyrazole. Now the next synthesis is by decarboxylation of pyrazole tricarboxylic acid. Here the starting material is this tricarboxylic acid which is itself is a pyrazole derivative. So it is pyrazole 345 tricarboxylic acid. When this is heated at a high temperature of 300 degrees centigrade the carbon dioxide molecules will be released out from here and thus it gives us formation of 
1H pyrazole. Now the next synthesis is from tetraethoxypropane and hydrazine. Dear students, this is our starting material which is called as 1133-tetraethoxypropane. This is reacted with the hydrazine which is in its dihydrochloride form. The hydrogen is NH2NH2. So these two hydrogens will react with this two ethoxy group and thus two ethanol molecules will be removed out. Likewise, these two hydrogens reacted with these two ethoxy groups and thus two more ethanol molecules will be liberated out. So this gives us formation of this intermediate compound where we have the double bond between this carbon and nitrogen and this carbon and nitrogen. Once again, it is a 4H derivative and it has to be converted into its more stable 1H form. So once again, the migration of hydrogen takes place over here. So the bond gets shifted over here and this bond is actually there. So ultimately by migration of the hydrogen and by shifting of the bonds, we have formation of 1H pyrazole. Now the next synthesis is from unsaturated carbonyl compound and hydrazine. As the name indicate, the unsaturated carbonyl compound is this one, which is alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. The starting material in this case is acrolein. This structure CH2 double bond CHCHO is called as acrolein and this reacted with the hydrazine which is the example of a base and it is a nucleophile. So nucleophilic addition on to this molecule takes place in such a way that the nucleophile attack on the beta carbon while the proton attack on the alpha carbon. So one hydrogen goes to this carbon to make it CH2 and the whole NH-NH2 group is then attached or add on the beta carbon to give the formation of 3 hydrazinyl propanol. Now this compound then release one water molecule. Now if we look at this structure we will find that this oxygen and this amino group are in close contact with each other. So this nitrogen attack on this carbon to bring nucleophilic addition followed by elimination of water molecule and thus the double bond is generated between this carbon and this nitrogen. So this will give us this dihydrocyclized pyrazole derivative. Now this compound then undergoes oxidation whereby one hydrogen from this carbon and this carbon removed out as hydrogen molecule and thus a double bond is generated between this carbon and this carbon. So with this we have formation of 1H pyrazole. So that was all about the synthesis. Now move on to the reactions. The first reaction is electrophilic substitution reaction which takes place at position number 4. Now why this is so? If we look at the structure of pyrazole we will find that here is a nitrogen and here is a nitrogen. The nitrogens are electron withdrawing in nature. So this nitrogen withdraw the electron from this carbon, this nitrogen withdraw the electron from this carbon. So electron density is less at this and this carbon that is position number 3 and at position number 5. That means the electron density is somewhat high on position number 4. So any electrophile will then attack on the position number 4 to give us the substitution product. For example, when pyrazole is treated with nitric acid in presence of sulfuric acid, the nitronium ion generated from here will attack on position number 4 to give 4 nitro 1H pyrazole. Likewise, when pyrazole is treated with sulfuric acid 
the sulfur trioxide electrophile get attached at portion number 4 to form pyrazole 4 sulfonic acid likewise we have the next electrophilic substitution reaction for example the pyrazole treated with the chlorine in presence of some suitable reagent like FeCl3 the Chloronium ion gets attached at position number 4 to give us 4 chloro 1H pyrazole. So, dear students, the nitration, sulfonation, and halogenation, these three reactions are exclusively given by pyrazole. Now, move on to the next reaction that is acetylation. Pyrazole on reaction with acetic anhydride gives this acetylation reaction. This acetylation is simply the attachment of acetyl group onto the nitrogen. This nitrogen being basic in nature attack on the carbonyl carbon of acetic anhydride to release out one molecule of acetic acid and thus this COCH3 group will get attached onto the nitrogen. The reaction involved is nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction. Next reaction is the oxidation reaction. Some derivatives of pyrazole gives this reaction. For example, this derivative 5 methyl 1H pyrazole gives the very famous oxidation reaction with KMnO4 potassium permanganate. This side alkyl chain of methyl this gets oxidized to corresponding carboxylic acid. So with this we have formation of pyrazole. 5 carboxylic acid. Next, move on to the next reaction, which is the reduction reaction. Here, when pyrazole is treated with sodium in presence of alcohol ethanol, the ethanol gives us the hydrogen ions which are get attached on to the double bond between the carbons only so it is a very specific reaction by this reaction the the reduction of that double bond takes place which is between carbons only so the reduction gives the formation of 4 5 dihydro 1h pyrazole next move on to the last topic that is important medicinal compounds so here is a uh, one structure and the name of this structure is celecoxib which is a potent analgesic drug. So dear students that is all about the parasol. Thanks for watching the video. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.